Chemistry. Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today we're focusing on pH calculations. What I'd like to accomplish in this webcast, I'd like to very quickly talk about acid-base theory so that we can compare strong acids to weak acids and bases, and how strong and weak acids are different. I'd like to introduce the essential equations and then apply them to complete several practice problems. The goal is for you to feel very comfortable and confident carrying out these calculations. First, let's talk about acids. Acids, according to Arrhenius theory, release hydrogen ions in solution. Some common examples, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, acetic acid. Only that first hydrogen, though, in the acetic acid is uh, an ionizable acidic hydrogen. That's why I wrote it with the H in the, H in the cation position. When we talk about a strong acid, what we mean is that there's 100% association of the molecules. Every acid molecule, which I'm calling here HA, dissociates to form an H plus ion and the anion, or the conjugate base. So I started in the picture model with 20 HA molecules, and then I dissolved them in water. I didn't show the water molecules, it would be too much. But what I really want you to take away from this is that every one of the HA molecules dissociated to form a cation and an anion. There's no HA molecule left anywhere in the solution. That's what I mean by 100% dissociation. If your teacher hasn't told you this already, it's time to memorize the common strong acids, HCl, HNO3, HBr, HI, H2SO4, but really only for the first hydrogen, and HClO4 are the common ones. You really need to know them. You need to recognize them. Weak acids, when we talk about those, means that less than 5% of the molecules are dissociating. So again, if we're starting with 20 HA molecules, all right, out of the 20, 19 of them stay together as HA molecules. And I only get one cation and one anion. That's less than 5%. Well, here it's exactly 5% in the picture model. That was the best I could do. But in a real life situation, it's usually significantly less than 5% dissociation for a weak acid. So if it's not a strong acid, you're going to assume it's a weak acid. So you really need to know those strong acids. We can do a similar kind of thing for bases. Arrhenius theory says that bases release hydroxide ions in solution. We can also talk about our bases as being strong bases, which means that each one of the formula units is dissociating, and we can talk about weak bases, where less than 5% of them dissociate. So that idea of strong versus weak is something that we have to keep in mind. I'd like to go ahead and start introducing the formulas themselves now. The definition of pH. Right, is the negative log of the H3O plus concentration. Well, sometimes you'll see it H3O plus, sometimes you'll see it H plus. You don't normally have just H plus ions running around in solution. They normally do complex with water. So either way, right now, that's interchangeable for us, H plus or H3O plus, but it's that negative log. All right. If you need to go in the other direction, all right, if you're given the pH and you need to find the hydronium ion concentration, the hydronium ion concentration equals 10 raised to the negative pH. You do need to make sure you have that negative sign in there or it won't work. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that for a strong acid, because of the 100% dissociation, the hydrogen ion concentration is essentially that of the acid concentration. Again, it's that 100% dissociation. That's a handy thing to remember when you're doing the problems. We can develop similar equations for the pOH. We can define the pOH as the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And similarly, if we know the pOH, 10 to the negative pOH will get us back to the hydroxide ion concentration. You need to be able to do these formulas. And really, it's important that you memorize these equations. They should be second nature. I know they're on your formula sheet, but you really just need to know them. I wanted to talk briefly about the pH scale. When a solution is neutral at 25 degrees Celsius, it's got a pH of 7. That means that the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. When you have an, an acidic solution where the pH is less than 7, the hydroxide ion concentration is less than the hydronium ion concentration. So H plus is greater than OH minus when it's acidic. That's what it means to be acidic. You need to remember that. In a basic or alkaline solution, the hydroxide ion concentration is greater than that of the H plus concentration. All right, so at our solutions where the pH is greater than 7, we have more hydroxide ions. You do have both 
at all times. It is an equilibrium system. Some other equations or formulas that you might find handy, the sum of the pH plus the pOH are going to add up to 14 for a solution in water at 25 degrees Celsius. Similarly, the concentration of the hydroxide ion times the concentration of the hydronium ion is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14th, again at 25 degrees Celsius. This is the KW expression from the auto ionization of water. Again, very handy equations, and again, equations I recommend that you memorize. So we can actually link them all together if you need to, if you know the pH, you can find the pOH, the hydroxide ion concentration, the H plus concentration. If you know any one of these four things, you can find the others. The equations do actually all link together, which is something to keep in mind. And you might even want to make a note of this. Uh, you can pause the podcast and just write that down if you want to. It's just a handy thing. Let's go and do some practice problems. A solution of hydrochloric acid is determined to have a concentration of 3.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. What's the pH of the solution? Well, the first thing I want you to recognize, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. And therefore, the concentration of H plus is equal to the concentration of the acid. So the H plus concentration is 3.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. Also, because of the logarithmic nature of the pH scale, the, P, the exponent in the concentration was 4. Uh, well, negative 4. But because we've got that 4 in there, that means our pH is going to be close to 4. It turns out it's going to be a little bit less than 4. But it gives you a ballpark, an estimation for the answer. All right. The other thing I want to point out is that in pH measurements, only the digits after the decimal are significant. So if we know our concentration to two significant figures, and we do, that means when we calculate our pH, we need to report our pH to two digits after the decimal place. Again, it's because of the logarithmic nature of the pH scale. So since pH equals the negative log of H+, plus, all right, we can substitute and evaluate and calculate the pH. comes out to be 3.42. Remember, we had to have two digits after the decimal point. The 3 here, technically, is not a significant digit. Let's go on and do another problem. The pH of a cleaning solution is found to be 9.2. You stick your pH meter in, and that's what you get. What is the hydronium ion concentration? OK. Well, we know that the pH is 9.2. We also know that the hydronium ion concentration is equal 10 to 10 raised to the negative pH. You do need to make sure you have that negative pH in there. That's really important. All right, so 10 raised to the negative 9.2. All right, and the answer comes out to be 6 times 10 to the minus 10 molar. Remember, 9.2 only has one digit after the decimal. I'm only allowed one sig fig in my answer. The other thing I want to point out um, where students sometimes get tripped up is that different calculators have you enter things in different orders. They have you do the keystrokes in different sequences. You need to know your calculator. Do you need to do 10 and then the negative pH? Do you do negative pH and then the, you know, the exponential thing? Know your calculator. Practice and make sure you get the right answer. All right, let's do a third problem. The pH of a different cleaning solution is measured to be 8.6. What is the hydroxide ion concentration? This is not something we can do in one step. This is a two-step calculation, and there are two different ways we could do it. We could say, oh, well, I know that the pH plus the pOH add up to 14, and then because once I know the pOH, the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 10 to the negative pOH, or um, I could use um, the pH to find H+, plus, and then I can do um, H plus times OH minus concentrations equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. So I've got two roots. I'm going to pick the first root, not for any particular reason. It's just what I'm going to do. So we know the pH is the plus pOH adds up to 14. I can rearrange that. pH equals 14 minus pH. So that's 14 minus 8.6, which gives me a pOH of 5.4. Fine. That, and I know that the um, hydroxide ion concentration is 10 to the negative pOH, or 10 to the negative 5.4. And so I get a hydroxide ion concentration of 4 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. Again, there's only one sig fig here that's allowed in my answer. Great. Let's do one final problem. A solution has a hydroxide ion concentration of 4.5 times 10 to the minus 11th molar. What is the pH of the solution? 
Now, we have to be very careful here as well. This is also a two-step problem, and there's more than one way to do it. One possible strategy is to say, okay, h plus time, uh, times OH minus equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14th, and solve for the h plus concentration, and then solve for pH. So that's one way I can do it. The other way I could do it is find the pOH and then do pH plus pOH equals 14. And I'm going to do it the way I've outlined here because that's what I feel like doing, but you should get the same answer either way. So I know H plus times OH minus equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. I can rearrange that and substitute in my hydroxide ion concentration. Oops, I forgot, the subscripts didn't, sh or the superscripts didn't show up there. I'm sorry about that. Um, 10 to the minus 14th. Um, and so when I solve that, I get H plus equals 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4th molar. That's what the square brackets imply. All right, and so then I know since the pH equals the negative log of H plus, I can substitute and evaluate. pH equals the negative log of 2.2 times 10 to the minus 4th, and I get a pH of 3.66. Remember, I get to have two digits after the decimal because I had two digits in my original, uh, two significant digits in my original concentration. Great. I hope you feel very comfortable with these problems. Practice them a lot. You want to be really good at doing them.